Is it possible to grow anything here in Siberia in this harsh climate where even people could hardly survive? Yes, it is. Moreover, the local crops have already saved huge number of people from hunger and Siberia could provide big seeds of hope for all of us very soon. To prove that, you are welcome to be my guest today in a dacha to check out the Siberian harvest I got here. My name is Nina. I'm in the countryside in Siberia right now. And if you want to understand what's going on at all in Russia and in the post-Soviet space, then my channel is definitely for you. Let's get started. What exactly is a dacha? It is a family summer house that every second Russian has. And they used to have it to get some food to survive, even in the recent past. But that phenomenon has got a totally new meaning here over the last one and a half years. And today, in my grandma's dacha, we'll talk about Siberian harvest and the very dramatic story behind it. What's in the garden today? Hardly anything really. The dacha season usually is from May till September, and that period is even shorter in Siberia because the climate is harsher here. So just the beginning of September and it has been harvested already. So it's done. By the way, how do you like those colors? I really, really love them. So that's the very last chance to see the crop here because most of it would be marinated or frozen today or tomorrow. What do I have here? Fresh vegetables. We used in summer for food. And now tomatoes and cucumbers get canned for winter and this garlic helps in doing that a lot this big orange pumpkin we won't use it to celebrate halloween we don't do it here although some teenagers could but we would hold it till winter just like that without doing anything and it would be fine and finally legendary summer squash why is that because there are many jokes here about this particular thing most people grow them a lot in dutches but it seems that after that they don't really know what to do with them how to cook them or maybe they just don't like they taste that much and they even back by friends by family members by colleagues please anybody anybody would take my summer squashes different types of berries Ashbury and strawberry. It's frozen already and they used to make winter jams. So as you can see, Russian cuisine, Siberian cuisine is designed to help you to survive the harsh cold. Winter is coming very soon to Siberia and the first snow can fall in mid-October. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to experience a true Siberian winter with me, with your favorite Siberian. For example, I'm going to share soon some videos I made about Lake Baikal in winter or about Siberians in winter. If you want to support my work, you'll find the information below how to do that. And I would really appreciate that. And now back to my Siberian harvest. Another interesting feature, especially here in Siberia, is that Dacha folk likes competing with each other in growing some exotic fruits. What is exotic for Siberia? Well, honestly speaking, almost anything. I would say only apple trees are something normal here. So my grandma tried growing melons plums and pears that's the very last pair from her dacha they are not really supposed to grow here that's why they end up being very small hard and not really tasty but that's a reason to be proud i managed to grow that even in one of the harshest climates in the world now let's compare the size of a siberian apple and a normal apple from a shop i bought it very close to my house it's supposed to be from south in russia it means from the south of the european part of russia you can see the difference right now let's compare pears a siberian pear and a normal pear from south in russia so you could see that they are three or even four times smaller 
and vegetables and berries are normal here, so they look fine. But it seems that there is kind of glass ceiling for fruits here, if I could put it that way. So for sure there are many limitations for them to thrive here. Please let me know below in the comments if you have any questions about Siberia and the post-Soviet space in general. Smaller is better sometimes, and I'm pretty sure most of you have never thought about Siberia that way, but in fact, that land has saved huge number of people from hunger. And those tiny fruits did mean the world to those people who could get nothing. For example, my grandfather was secretly sent to Siberia by his parents as a kid, and I say secretly because it seems that it was not really allowed at the time to travel because it was a huge famine in the major grain producing area in the Soviet Union, including Ukraine and southern Russia, where he was born in the 1930s. So his family did hope that at the very least by moving him to Siberia, he would survive. He didn't remember that and he was told he was adopted by a relative and uh, he was told what really happened to his family only when he turned 18 and for sure it was a huge trauma for him. Please let me know below in the comments if you had anything similar in your family history. I always relate a lot to such stories because I have it in my background. And I know that many people from the States and Australia are watching my videos and I guess many people migrated to those countries because something dramatic happened back home. And Let's be honest, migration, with very few exceptions, has never been easy. And the point is, I guess most of you wondered how people survive in Siberia. But the fact is, many people did survive because they moved to Siberia. Yes, it's hard to grow anything here. Yes, you can't get tasty pears and plums. But at least you could get something. We've talked about the past and now it's high time to discuss our future a little bit. Why did I say at the very beginning of this video that Siberia would bring big seeds of hope to all of us? Higher temperatures are expected to shift crop production more and more northward. And because of that, Siberia could step into this global farming business. Just take a look at the map I made for you. Most people live in the very south of Siberia, along the Trans-Siberian Railroad, and hardly anybody is farming anywhere elsewhere. Please let me know below in the comments if you want to know more about that. Stay tuned, stay optimistic. As you have seen today, you can get a really good harvest, even in Siberia. And see you soon.